Hi, welcome to River Tea. Welcome back if you've been here before. I'm Long Hair Linda and today we are talking about The Real Housewives of New Jersey, season 13, episode 4. And this one is called Housewarming History Lesson. So, let's go! So if you've been watching my other recaps, my most recent ones were Basketball Wives and Love and Marriage DC, you will know that I've been a little bit under the weather and I'm still recovering from some kind of flu situation. I'm over like the worst of it, um, but you know, still touch and go, so you're just gonna have to bear with me. Today I have the aid of, you know, my trusted glass of Malbec. So hopefully I will have the energy that this episode requires because a lot was going on. So let's get straight into it. If my computer is loud, I'm so sorry. So we see the immediate aftermath of Guy's Night at specifically 1.32 a.m. John comes home drunk and says he had about 17 to 19 shots and drank the most out of everyone. Evan says he's sober. Joe Benigno, is that how you say it, Benigno? Margaret's husband, Joe, goes right to sleep. He was trying to, you know, hit on her and make moves or something. He fell asleep. Ooh. Nate calls it the weakest initiation ever, and he's done worse on a Monday night. So I want to see more of Nate's nights out, clearly. So the next day, it looks like the next day anyway, at Teresa's, Louis and Teresa catch up on Guy's Night and Louis talks about how heated it got with him and Joe. Teresa apologises because his family has been so good to her while her family causes a circus. Those are her words. At the Gorgas new home that they're building, uh, Joe catches Melissa up on Guy's Night and the two of them try to justify that horrendous podcast, in my opinion. Again, I, I would just really like to reiterate that Joe Judice did not need the two of you to film for Teresa's special. You needed him, okay? We, as the viewers, were happy to watch him and the girls, especially him and Melania, you know, go back and forth. Um, him with his family. Teresa's, you know, uh, dad was still alive at the time. I think also her mom was still alive, so Teresa's parents. We had scenes. We we were fine. We did not need your little three scenes that Joe and Melissa contributed because it was all, oh, we didn't get to see the girls. We wanted to see the girls. So why are you acting like you put food on the table? Stop it. This whole thing is so stupid. It's so, so stupid. And it's really annoying that they're making me have to go this hard for Teresa because Teresa has her moments where she's so wrong. But they're just so much more wrong. And to have made this whole thing a storyline is so infuriating as a viewer for all this time, 13 years. I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of it. But I digress. Back at Teresa and Louis, Teresa says she's embarrassed by how Joe spoke to Louis and Teresa asks why she would invite Melissa's family that she isn't close with and that they don't care that Louis's family wasn't invited to Antonia's Sweet 16. This is why I don't do family gatherings. Like the family politics of it all is just too much for me, okay? I know this is an Italian family. There's a lot of, you know, tradition that's in there. There's a lot of pride that's held in, you know, gathering and celebrations and all that kind of stuff. And it's very, very similar in Kenyan traditions. And that's why I just stay out of it. You can take offense at me not coming to your thing, that's fine. I'd rather that. Like, even now, to a point, like, my extended family know just not to even bother inviting me to stuff. Like, they'll let my mum know. Mum will just hit me up and be like, hey, do you want... Mama, no. Because I'm not doing all of this. I don't want to get involved in all the wild stuff that goes on with families. I'm just not interested. And maybe that's the only child in me. My immediate family was very small. So maybe that's why I can't be asked with all of the shenanigans and the goings on of the extended family i just don't care and so i don't want to have to deal with things like this <laughs> of like well you didn't get invited to sweet 16 and you didn't get invited to the engagement party to sit at my table you didn't get invited to be on in the bridal party at the wedding it's all just like it doesn't matter to me 
But I know it's very, very important to some people. Again, I digress. Joe is being the victim again. And Louis tells Teresa that he feels bad for him and asks Teresa to give him a call. So during the very awkward phone call that feels quite produced in the moment, because how come the cameras just had to be, just would just so happen to be with the both of them at the same time when Teresa made the call, whatever. Um, Louis has to basically write down talking points like want to make peace and invite to party like all this kind of stuff on a notepad for Teresa because this call is just awkward and she doesn't know what to say and they're kind of just like effectively grunting at each other in a very Neanderthal way um but anyway Joe doesn't want to talk about all the stuff in the past because it upsets him Teresa says well my therapist says you shouldn't harp on the things in the past Teresa, with help from Louis, um, asks if Joe is coming to her love bubble party and he says he doesn't know. I'm actually very proud of Louis in this moment and actually, surprisingly, Melissa too. Because in the back and forth cuts, we see Melissa pushing Joe and Louis pushing Teresa to like talk and just be like normal. So I'm very happy to see that. By the way, I don't know what's happening with my vocal cords right now. They've decided to give way tonight. So... I apologize and this is just so loud just everything that could go wrong is going wrong right now wine's making it better I'm not gonna lie at Dolores's her mother Valerie and son Frankie are over and discuss Miss Valerie's diet and how she needs to be healthy to avoid another heart surgery Dolores asks what she had for breakfast and Miss Valerie says a piece of cake, but she hasn't had cake all week. So that's good for her. <laughs> Dolores catches Miss Valerie and Frankie up on Paulie meeting the guys and specifically Paulie's relationship with her ex-husband, Frank. Frankie makes a point that Paul probably saw the relationship with uh, Frank and Dolores' recent ex, David, and doesn't want to be in that type of relationship with him as well. Dolores thinks Frank will get over it. They're big guys. Her priority is her relationship with Paulie. I think that's the best move. Leave them to it. At this point, like, they'll figure it out. And if they don't, they don't. It's it's not to do with you. Don't let them put you in the middle because everybody here has grown. Too grown for this. And frankly, no pun, in, no pun intended, <laughs> if I can get my words out. Frankly, I just think Frank is spoiled. And he's been spoilt by having Dolores in his life long after they divorced, doing all the things that a wife should. So he's spoiled and he misses that. And why wouldn't he, right? But that moment is done now, Frank. Get over it. Bill and Jen Aiden go for drinks and dinner and chat about their son's upcoming prom and how he wants a party bus. Jen has been spoiling the kids after a tough year, you know, dealing with the whole Bill's infidelity being exposed last year. Jen wants Bill to be more supportive, especially with the women, and feels taken for granted. Bill wants to defuse the situation, but Jen wants him to back her up. And this very much reminds me of these conversations that sometimes happen um, on social media, also like in real life, um, of how like a calm guy is best suited to a more like extroverted, extra woman, right? And it's said because they tend to balance each other out. And while I agree to some extent, I also think it can go the complete other way and they can just infuriate each other and it's a recipe for disaster. And I think in this case we have Bill, who seemingly to me is very calm, very stoic, very much wants to keep the peace. And then you have Jen where she's like, ha, loud, fun. But if you push her, she wants to go for the jugular and she wants to be like in the mix and confronting it. And she's got comebacks. She's just firing them off. Bill's not like that. And I think in this moment, Jen is very much being like, I need you to be right there with me. Because Bill asks if Jen uh, is only wants things on her terms. And she asks, what's wrong with gassing her up a little? Bill's like, so should I just say, you're right, honey. She's an effing expletive. Let's go. And Jen's like, yes. Bill thinks they'd have to explain that to their kids about the greater good being to diffuse or something in that 
that line. Um, and Jenna's just done that. So she just shuts down the conversation. And at this point, I was like, poor Bill. It's just not his personality. And then I remembered that affair. And the poor Bill just left my body. Because I won't feel sorry for a man that would have an affair on his pregnant wife. I don't care if you're a good guy now. I'm never going to give you sympathy. So deal with it, is what I would say. Jennifer Fessler and Rachel are meeting for lunch. And they had hit it off instantly, if you remember, at Danielle's mozzarella party. Because they found out they're both half Jewish and half Italian. They just seem to get on really well and have a really nice dynamic. So, you know, they're meeting up for lunch. And uh, Jen Fessler is a whole mood, by the way. She orders a pizza. <laughs> she orders a pizza. Granted, I don't know the size of this pizza. But I'm assuming it's a single, like an individual size pizza, right? Maybe a nine inch or something like that. And... Um, Rachel at one point turns to Jen and is like, oh, so when she's placing her order, she's like, can I, can we share that? And Jen's like, I don't do that. <laughs> it's just a mood. I don't do that. Like, I relate to that. That's, that's so, I just find her so funny. I find she gets like, she has like really, really funny moments and I'm still confused as to why she's besties with Margaret, but that's just a me thing. So Rachel says RIP to the delicious mozzarella that didn't get eaten during um, all of the drama at the party. But Jen is like, oh, I ate it. And the producers flash back to her stress eating the whole time, which again, relatable content. The ladies talk about the arguments that went on and get to Jennifer Aiden, who brought up Rachel's nose job at the party and followed up with a phone call to apologize if she offended Rachel. And, you know, to talk about why she brought it up. She's unhappy with the results of her own nose job. And for a little general chit-chat as well. The conversation apparently turned to Jen talking-ish about Dolores, according to Rachel. And she's close with Dolores and Frank and Frank's child bride, Brittany. And Rachel just shut, shut the whole conversation down. And Jen Fessler reveals that Jen Aiden called her too. Turns out Jen Aiden was bad mouthing Margaret, which is odd because Jen Fess has been her bestie for three years. Rachel says this whole behavior reminds her of high school and says jealousy is a disease. Get well soon, Jennifer Aiden. Now that's cute. That's cute, Rachel. But I don't really think that applies to this situation. So they obviously talk about this at the party later, which I will get to. But in this moment, I was like, it doesn't really sound right. Like, it doesn't sound like Jen is jealous of anything, because why would she bring the two of you up? To me, it sounds like, if I, okay, so if I want to be optimistic, Linda, it sounds like, hey, she's met some new people, she's had some nice conversations with them, she wants to catch up on a phone call after the events of the party. Pessimistic, Linda, is like, strategy. If you get them on side, they were quite vocal when she was having arguments with Margaret and Dolores before. So getting them to understand your side, strategy-wise, is smart and good for the show if you want to get people on your side, right? None of that said jealousy to me, though, but that's just me. Uh, then we get a very boring scene of Margaret and... Um, Dolores shopping for plants and talking about Teresa's upcoming party and the guys' drinks. They call Melissa. Of course, she's talking about how mad Joe is about the whole family not getting invited and they're good people and blah, blah, blah. And he doesn't want to go to, Joe, to Teresa's party. So, fine. Whatever. Who cares? So, it's the day of Teresa's party and Melania shows up looking incredible and so much older, by the way. She's like 17 now. No, she's 15. She just looks older. She's either 15 or 17. I can't remember what the little card said underneath in the lower third, but she's one of those ages. And she looks so grown. She was, oh, she's adorable. Jo um, calls Melissa while she's getting her makeup done uh, to confirm that he is not going to the party because he doesn't want to be uncomfortable. Melissa is still going because she wants to keep the peace, apparently. Back at Teresa's, Gia arrives and Teresa breaks the news to the girls that Joe won't be coming. He texts her. Milani doesn't understand why they just don't want Teresa to be happy. And guests begin to arrive. So... Mm, 
listen, Melania's gonna be vocal, and and we had a cut scene at the end of this with Melania like being like, if they don't come to this wedding, done or something like that, right? Melania's always been the G of the family. Let's be real, out of all the girls, let's be real. And. I feel like the girls are getting involved because they're seeing their mum happy and they're hearing all the stuff in the press with their aunt and uncle and they're not impressed. And I wouldn't be either. I don't care who's right or wrong in terms of the actual family fighting, but to be going out on the podcast and doing all of this stuff, not for me. And I can see why that would make the girls feel away. I can understand that from their point of view not being invested in all the back and forth that we are all viewing on the show, if that makes sense. So I think Melania's point was really quite poignant on there, just being like, why don't they just want to be, why don't they just want you to be happy? After everything, why can't they just celebrate the good things? And when drama starts to kick off, they can just go that way. I feel like if you're that desperate to be on a show with your sister, just be on the show for the good stuff. Whatever. Anyway, so uh, Danielle arrives as well with her husband and points out the dancer in the pool, giving Teresa the opportunity to say, it's a love bubble. Margaret tells Dolores and Jackie that Jen Fessler had filled her in on the comments that Jen Aiden had apparently made to her on the phone, saying that it's not that Margaret thinks um, Jen is disingenuous. The reason I read this wrong is because I wrote disingenuous and I cannot believe that Miriam Webster was right there and didn't tell that lady that it's disingenuous. That's the word you're looking for, Margaret. So it's not that Margaret thinks that Jen is disingenuous, it's that Margaret is actually envious of Jen Aiden's life. So this is apparently what Jen told Jen Fessler. Melissa arrives without Joe and Teresa reveals her kids haven't seen Joe in like six months but she's happy that Melissa is here. Danielle can't help but draw parallels to her own situation with her brother. Remember we found out last episode that her and her brother haven't spoken and she wasn't at his wedding and loads of things have been going on there. So I'm looking forward to finding out a bit more, like I said last episode about this dynamic because it seemed to be breaking their father's heart. So. Rachel brings up to Dolores that Frank misses the dynamic with her before Paulie showed up and Dolores thinks he has to get over it. Paulie is the man in her life, not Frank. I'm totally with Dolores. It's it's all very stupid. This storyline is, is dumb. I'm over it. I don't feel sorry for Frank. Am I supposed to? I don't, I don't know. Melissa has the most awkward conversation with Gia and Gabriella and Gia tells us in her confessional that every time Teresa and Joe fall out that the kids don't get to see each other while Melissa says in her confessional that it's just sad. She has love for the girls, but knows that the girls have hate for them. Like, I just can't. I can't with Melissa. I really, I just can't. And also, it's not believable anyway, but like just watching the way she like walked around, like walked away from the girls and acting like she has all this love for them. And I know it was awkward and it was cringy and whatever, but like, it's just not giving real. It's not. It's just not. And it is what it is. Teresa and Louis give a speech in which Teresa tells the guests that they are their chosen family, which goes down about as well as you can imagine a slightly shady comment can go on this show. Bill yells, we miss you, Joe. And Margaret tells Melissa that that was a D thing to say. Think of a word that starts with D. And you know what I'm saying. Melissa talks about how sad she is for Joe to not be there with his nieces um, while she's talking to Jackie and Margaret. And then she walks off crying. She comes back out after crying in the bathroom. And it sounds so heartless, but I'm just, I don't have it in me for the Gorgas anymore. I just don't. It's been too long and been too much. She comes out crying. Uh, she was crying in the bathroom. She comes out and admits to Jackie that she told Danielle about Jackie's digs about Danielle's clothes. Jackie loudly says she's not mad because Danielle is a horrible dresser and wore those hamper shorts twice in the row, all while Danielle is standing a few feet away from her. 
Danielle walks over as Jackie calls her insignificant and asks Jackie if her outfit is appropriate or if it looks like it just came out of a dirty hamper. Now Jackie looks a little bit shook to me here when she said, no, not right now, you look, no, she says, no, right now you don't look like you're going to a pool party and goes on to deny looking her up and down, which of course produces disprove instantly with a flashback. Danielle starts explaining that she didn't invite Jackie to her house for her party because she didn't get a good vibe from her. Before she can finish her point, Jackie interrupts Danielle to tell her to get her hands out of her face, to which Danielle responds, you're from Staten Island, you'd know if my hands were in your face, they're not, this is how I talk. She's doing, she's waving her hands around and Jackie asks if that's a threat. Girl, bye. Look at her, look at what she's doing. She's not threatening you. Ugh. This lady gets on my nerves sometimes. Anyway, Jackie tells her to keep her hands out of her space and says if the words I'm sorry can't leave your F in mouth, then F off. Now I'm confused. What does Danielle have to apologize for? Is it just for not inviting her to a party? Because that's nothing that requires an apology. If I don't invite you somewhere, I don't know you like that. Why do I apologize for that? And if it's not that, what else does she have to apologize for? If anything, you're the one that was insulting her, so you should be owing Danielle an apology. And it's you that can't say an I'm sorry. So maybe you should F off. But I digress. Jackie walks off and is miserable for a bit, while Danielle goes right back to having a good time with the other girls. Later, Jackie grabs Jen Aiden to do a shot and Margaret comes over and says, she called you a snob, like Jackie shouldn't be like socializing with her and should be mad at her. Jackie's like, I'm not offended, I am a snob, which I actually highly respect, unlike her behavior with Danielle not so long ago, but yes. Margaret, unsatisfied by this, says, yes, but she was talking ish about me to Jen Fessler. And Jen says she called Jen Fessler to get a recommendation for a marriage counselor. Just want to stop here for a second because the way Margaret and Jackie looked at each other when she talked about the, uh, the marriage counselor thing, Margaret especially looked like, oh, you've given me ammo. Was it just me that felt that way? I want to know your thoughts on this. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so she was asking Jen Fessler for a recommendation for a marriage counsellor and told us in her confessional that Jen Fessler was ish starting by telling her that and wasn't defending Margaret on the call at all. Jen Aiden clarifies that she didn't say Margaret was jealous. She thinks Margaret was threatened because she doesn't believe everything Margaret did to her last year was as a result of Jen being a hypocrite. Margaret calls Jen Fessler over and all the ladies come over. While Jen is explaining herself, she was trying to give context for saying that she wasn't starting ish, basically. Rachel jumps in to say she did the same thing with her about Dolores. Jen says she told Rachel not to get involved because she doesn't know the history of what's happened between the ladies. And Rachel doesn't dispute that, but instead yells, this isn't a history lesson. I don't get it, Rachel. Why are you so invested in this? Like, it feels like you're trying to start something, right? Like, what, she keeps inserting herself with stuff with Jen and it feels like she came prepared to me, in my opinion. It feels like she came prepared to not get on with Jen. Not just to this party, I mean to the show. And then you didn't actually dispute what Jen said. So Jen did call you to talk about your nose, your nose job, and to talk about giving you context and telling you not to get involved in the drama. You can agree or disagree with whether that's appropriate or not, but she didn't lie because you didn't dispute that. You just yelled, this isn't a history lesson. So if you didn't want to talk to her, why not just be like, I don't want to talk to you. Also, all 
all the ladies talk about each other. And when the other ladies meet, they're always talking about Jen. So what's the, I don't understand the issue. Anyway, Jackie calms Jen down to be able to get her point across, which I really appreciated from Miriam Webster. And Jen says she called Rachel to apologize about bringing up her nose job at the party. People badmouth her about her own terrible nose job. And she felt bad about Rachel's bad nose job too. Now, Rachel froze. This was your moment. You were supposed to have a comeback ready. You came, all, you came there and inserted yourself all the way through the middle of that conversation with the ladies that had nothing to do with you. The least you could have done is been prepared. You are on the Real Housewives of New Jersey, Miss Man. Where was the smoke? Why weren't you ready? Have a little pre-rehearse something if you're not quick-quitted. Where was it? You blew your opportunity there. To me. By the way, Jen, F <laughs> Jen Fessler walking, like, coming and just walking away. <laughs> and, like, the reactions of everybody in that moment were so great. They made me laugh so much and I really just love that moment, especially Jen Fessler. I, I just, her reaction took me out. Anyway, Dolores is stuck on Jen calling to talk about her and Jen yells again that she wasn't calling specifically to talk about her. They just left Danielle's and don't they all call each other when Ish goes down? And she turns over to Jackie. Jackie, without missing a beat, says, I don't know, I wasn't invited to her house. Take notes, Rachel. You gotta be quick in this group. Teresa tells Rachel that Jen would never tell her to take sides and Rachel confirms that Jen didn't do that. To which Jen says thank you, finally telling the truth. But Rachel didn't want to be a part of that. And Dolores says good for you, while Jen asks if she wants a medal. <laughs> when I tell you this last few scenes, these last few scenes, if I can conjugate, had me dying i was uh, yelping <laughs> because jen was on fire everything was just listen anyway at this point rachel was leaving she said she's not giving jen air she's leaving with her husband john as yeah uh, jen is yelling like idiot and don't let the door hit you on the way out rachel did try with a little there's no door a hole eh weak John, on the other hand, was like, you sure you want to just go? You don't want to check her? And I love that energy for a husband. So I'm going to keep an eye out for John because I like that kind of mood. It's a mood. Like, be like, oh, are you sure you want to leave? You don't want to check? You don't want to... I like that. Anyway, that was the end of the episode. So, rating. I gave this one an 8.5 out of 10. I did. My voice is going. Please forgive me. But I actually really, really enjoyed this episode, even though it was, you know, still Teresa and Joe drama. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great that Louis and even Melissa seemed genuinely trying to, like, help Teresa and Joe mend things, which was really good to see. Um, Bill and Jen Aiden clash a little at dinner about Bill not having Jen's back. And I think for the fact that you cheated on that lady while she was pregnant, had a whole affair, and now she has been embarrassed on TV about it when her nemesis revealed it on a show. You need to be yes, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, wherever you go. I've got your back, Bill Aiden. Jen Fessler and Rachel got a little messy after receiving phone calls from Jen Aiden after the mozzarella party and Teresa hosted a love bubble party that Joe Gorga was too busy being a victim to attend uh, where Melissa had an awkward interaction with Teresa's daughters and Jackie and Danielle argued and Jen Aiden argued with Margaret, Dolores and then Rachel and Rachel fumbled the bag. So I gave it an eight and a half out of ten because it was still extremely enjoyable for me. I want to know uh, what you gave it out of 10. I want to know your ratings, your thoughts, your comments, your musings. I want to know them in the comments down below, please. Or on social media at Riverty TV or both. Let me know. I'm curious. But for now, I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Ooh. All right. 
we did it. 